And hello everyone, welcome back to another Love 2D tutorial. So this is actually going to be a, a tutorial split into multiple parts because we're going to be creating our very first game in Love 2D because we'll be creating two games, which of the first will be very basic and in the second one will be a bit more complex, but it will give you an intro to everything you can basically do. So you probably want to see what game we are going to build. So let me just start up everything here and then boom. Now here we go. So this game is called Save the Ball. It's one of the very first games I made when I tried to create a game. So we have things like the FPS counter, which is optional. We have buttons and yeah. Now if we click on play game, we basically get this. We get a little counter here that counts how many points we have. This is based on seconds. So every second will give you a counter or a point. And then if you have enough points, then the next level will start where there appears another ball. Now these balls will get faster and faster with every level you make. For an example, in this case, the first level is 15. And then the second level I believe is 30, yes. And there's another level at 40, I believe, and one at 60, and it just goes on. But it's a very basic game, but it teaches you things like collision detection, how DT works, how to get the FPS, how to draw shapes, all of these things in Love 2D. And then you also have your game over screen with your score, and you can say something like replay if you want, and yeah. So that's the basics of the game. Now, if you do ever fall behind when trying to play this game, you can always just go to, whoa, my bad. You can always just go to GitHub, and this link will be in the description. If it's not, just send a comment my way, and I will remember to put it here. Now, in this repository here, YouTube Projects on Weednetsu, you can go here to Lua, and inside of it, you'll see a folder called Save the Ball, and in here, you'll have multiple parts. We are on part one. So everything we're going to do is going to be right here. So if you fall behind or you want to maybe go check, you can come here. And part five would be the end result. Okay, cool. So let me just move this back to its original screen. Now here I have an empty folder. I'm going to create a new folder and call it save the ball. You can add spaces and whatnot, but I'm going to keep it spaceless. And then in here, I'm going to create a new document or a new file and call it main.lua. Now, what do you need to know before we start with this tutorial? You need to know Love2D. I have a whole course on it with like five parts or something that you can watch. If you have not seen those tutorials yet, I do recommend you do because they are going to be very useful. You don't have to see them, we are going to cover a lot of things from the start, but I do recommend you do, because it will just make things so much easier if you do. And you also need love to d installed, of course. Now I'm going to open up VS Code in here, but you can open up whatever you want to. I just prefer coding in VS Code. So here's VS Code. I'm going to close this. And here you see, there's my main.lua file I created. Cool. Now, let's start by first importing love. So I'm going to say, local love is equal to require and love. Now we can create our three functions we need. So function, love.load, and this one will be love.update, and this one be love.draw. Cool. So as we know, this will load everything we need into the game. This will update the game. And this will draw everything to the screen. Now, we can save this. And we can also open up our terminal, which I'm going to move to the right. And now here we can say love. Dot. So it does nothing. Love2D here does absolutely nothing. So what I'm going to do, you do not have to do this, but I'm going to do this. If we can just, 
There we go. I'm going to create a new file, call it conf.lua. You do not need to create this configuration file. I, however, am going to create it because I would like my window to pop up on the second screen. But you do not have to do this because you might not have a second screen. So t.window.display and we can make that equal to 2. This should open it up on this window. Now we can just run love dot again and there we go. Cool. Now we can go back here. I'm going to close that conf file because I don't need it open anymore. And yeah. So first I would like to set the title of the window. So love dot window dot set title and we can set it to save the ball. Now you could have also put this inside of that conf.lua file. If you saw my tutorial on it, you do know how to put it in there. Although I want to show you the alternative methods of doing these things as well. So I'm going to do it on the onload of this love 2 d game. But if you want to, you can do it here as well. Because you can do this Windows display thing, you can also do it in here. You can do the Windows resizing in here, you can do everything you want in here. First thing I want to do is I want us to be able to see the cursor. Because if you might have noticed, or as you may have noticed, if I were to just move this back here, our cursor is a little white dot. That's our mouse. I want to code this into the game right now. So let's do that. Let's code it in. So first thing we'll need is we'll need to get the player location. And that's going to be that little circle. So local player is going to be equal to this. And you could also put this inside of this load. It's optional. Then we need three things. We need the radius. And I'm going to make that equal to 20. We need an X position and we're going to make that equal to 30. And we need a Y position and make that equal to 30. You could make this equal to zero as well. It doesn't matter. I just like doing 30 because why not? Cool. Now we need to basically always update that position. So player dot X and player dot Y is equal to the love dot mouse no mouse dot get position. So this right here returns two values. It returns an X and a Y position value. So we're storing the first value we get into this player.x, which is this, and the second value we get in the player.y, which is this. And we're doing it on every update because every time the player moves the cursor, an update will occur. Now you may also notice if I move around, things might look a little bit laggy, but that's just because I record on 15 frames per second because that's just what I'm used to and that's what I edit in. So things may look a bit laggy, but on your end, it should not be looking laggy. You should be getting about 30 to 60 frames a second. All right. Now here with the draw, we want to basically draw the circle. So I'm going to say love dot well, love.graphics.circle and I'm going to go fill method player.x player.y and also player.radius this will draw a circle where the players x and y meets up and give it the radius that we specified up here now if we were to run this we'll get a massive circle now this is the end game circle because we will have two states that we're going to be using right now. And those two states will determine the size of the player. So I'm going to create a local game and it's going to be a table with state. Now we have a menu and we're going to make it equal to true. Now this will be the states we have. So for example, we have a menu state. If it's a menu state, it's going to show the menu. If it's the paused state, it's going to show it a paused menu. Now here I'm going to make that paused. 
I'm going to make that running. And I'm going to make this ended. Now currently, we want all of these to be false. And just this one to be true. Because that's for the menu state. Now down here, we want to specify when should it do what size. So I'm going to go if game dot, dot state and we declared state up here and then in square brackets and in quotation marks I'm going to say if it's the menu state. So like that and you'll notice right here. So if it's the menu state then we want to basically do this and we just want to divide this by two. So if it's the menu state then it should be the normal circle size but just divided by two. I'm going to create another if statement, but this one will contain a not menu. And there's a reason I don't make this an if else statement. And you'll see in a future tutorials. So here I'm just going to remove that divided by two. Now if we were to run the game, we'll see this, a much smaller circle. That's because we're in the menu state. So the circle is half its original size. Now if I were to change the menu to false and then the running to true and uh, my bad these two should be running not menu and now that we have that we can actually just move that so divide it by two and we can just move it to the bottom one so now the first one is if the game is in its running state meaning if the game is being played give us the full circle otherwise in any other state half the size of that circle. Now if we run it, we get the full circle because it's in a running state. Any other state we switch to, no matter what the state, if we make this false and we make the state of paused to true, then we'll get the smaller version as you can see here. So any other state will give us the smaller version, but running will give us the big version. Cool, so I'm going to change this back to menu state. Now we need to hide the cursor because as you can see the cursor is still there. We don't really want the player to see the cursor because it breaks the immersion a little bit. So to get rid of the cursor what you can do is here in the load we can say love.mouse.sitvisible and we can make this equal to false. This will make the mouse invisible. So now if you run it, there's no longer a mouse. I can still move around, but the mouse itself is gone. Now, one last thing I do want to implement is the FPS counter, because let's say you're getting very bad FPS. You might have coded something wrong or something like that, because the FPS should usually stay at around 60 FPS, maybe falling to 30, but usually it should be 60 FPS. And we need a way to see that. So here at the top, because we don't want the FPS to block anything, so it should be at the top, so it always, if there's something above it, the FPS doesn't go over it. Anyways, we can say love.graphics.printf, and here we can just say FPS colon, and then dot dot, is to concatenate the string, love.timer.get, FPS and that should be timer not time and there we go now if we run it we actually get an error and I believe we get this error because we should specify our font so love the graphics the new font and I'm going to specify 16 and let's specify an X and Y location as well. So let's go 10, 10. So now we have a font size of 16 at its X and Y position is 10 and 10. Now if we run it, ooh, we still get an error. And we just also need to specify where it stretches to. So love.graphics.width should work perfectly fine. And it should be get width. As simple as that. 
now let's hope for the best. There we go, we get a little FPS. As you see, it's around 60 FPS, and that's where it's good. Okay, cool. Now just because I have a little screen space, I'm going to just split this up into multiple lines. Like that, okay. So first we display the FPS. Then we set the font size. Then here is the X position, which we can keep 10. Here is the Y position, which I would actually like to go love.graphics.get height minus 10. And this will put it at the bottom of the screen, which is what I want. I want the FPS to be at the bottom of the screen just because it's less distracting. Let's make that 30 just to make it a bit bigger or a bit higher. And in this basically sets how far it you go before wrapping the text. Now, if we were to run the code, our FPS is here at the bottom. And that's the very first part of the tutorial. We didn't do a lot. We just basically set the game state, created the player, created the load, the update and the draw functions where the load sets the window title. It makes the mouse invisible. It then we get to the update and it updates the player X and Y positions. Then on draw, it puts the FPS on the screen and if the game state is running, it draws a circle with the player X and Y position and also the player radius. If the game state is not running, then it does the same as with running, but it divides the player size in two. And yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you all again in the next Love2D tutorial.